All right. Uh, uh, my name is Mike Shaw, and I'm with a, 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 a old friend uh, from a very long time ago. Uh, you want to introduce yourself, mm -hmm. uh, Tom? Hello, I'm uh, Thomas, <laughs> and uh, Thomas McAllister, and uh, yeah, we're uh, trying to do this little thing here. Yeah. See how it goes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, we're just the uh, what uh, just wanted to do uh, some really cool coverage of uh, some uh, nerd pop culture and uh, comic book things, and just uh, kind of our take uh, from from that. We're both uh, in the technology world, uh, nerds. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> yes. Nerds pay to do our stuff anyway. Uh, uh, with that being said, uh, um, so recently, uh, October twenty second. Uh, yeah, October twenty second. The um uh, po or, uh the uh, movie came out, uh, Dune, uh, by uh, 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 Dennis and I can't pronounce his last name, but it's Dene and then it's a French last Dene, name. Uh, Dene, Dene, Dene Villeneuve. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so I saw the movie when it came out, uh, pretty much like the next night or whatever, um, that I could. And uh, how many times have you seen it, or what? What are your thoughts? Uh, and I'll, I'll let you go from there, and then kind of see where we go. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm kind of uh, the opposite of you uh, since you've seen it what two or three times. You said, yeah, just two. I saw it uh, two. Okay, I recently saw it today uh -huh. with my kiddos, and then I saw it a week before uh, with a with a good friend. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I, my plan was I took last week off, not for Dune, but just it happened that way. And um, I thought, oh, cool, Friday, Dune, I'm ready. But by the time Friday came around, like the, the weight of a, a two-hour, a two-and-a-half-hour movie of Dene Villeneuve, his stuff's intense. So I was like, yeah. I don't know if I'm ready yet. Uh, so I watched a bunch of other crap. And it, it wasn't until um, Monday morning that I actually watched it. And, um, I, and I, I'm one of the worst cinephiles in that i can watch a movie broken up I, my thoughts was since i'm watching it on hbo max mm -hmm. i could maybe watch an hour here hour that no forget that i watched the whole thing <laughs> right, right, right. when you and i, I kind of knew that and that's why I, I waited so long until i knew that i had that two and a half hours to um dive into it um sure. judging by his other movies I knew that he creates a world that you just kind of fall into, and especially going off of um, Blade Runner. That movie just kind of envelops you. Um, so I've only seen it the, the once. Um, but yeah, um, just the whole world. I love the the world building in it that just from the very beginning. <laughs> and oh, yeah. that's kind of, I was kind of worried uh, with the movie with the audience as I watched it because uh, it didn't take me out of the movie, but I was so in love with the world and the fact that there was, there was no concessions. You were in that world and there was no Marvel um, handy little quips there to uh, make you go, Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with my pals here. It's no, you're you're in this, and you really don't know the motivations of the characters yeah. until it slowly grows. And and there's not a movie I can think of recently that w that does that, yes. uh, that did that. Um, yeah. That's that's uh, that's exactly that's what kind of blew my doors off. Was there's this? I, I mean, I'm a sci-fi nerd. You know, like I I, I read novels. Mm -hmm. I I do this like. My favorites are yeah, Ian M. Banks and and, and Heinlein and uh, you know all the classics Arthur C. Clarke mm -hmm. etc. Like, yeah, all, definitely all in, in all shades in between. I've never read the book of Dune, so it was new to me. But that's the thing mm -hmm. that kind of was so unique about it is I've never seen a science fiction movie like this before. There's always like some kind mm -hmm. of a technology hook or like some other plot device mm -hmm. or something like this. And that it's none mm -hmm. of that. It's just off the strength mm -hmm. of its own uniqueness. I don't know how to put it, mm -hmm. but it's 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 not mm -hmm. bland, but it's just it's it's it carries its own weight like from the from the get go. Like there is no right, you know, like and, lead in. Does mm, that make it, sense? Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, I kind of just now thought of an analogy of a of a band, a music band, like 
most music van, bands usually have a standout person, right? Like, uh, and, and so with this movie, with movies, you s- usually have like a standout, like, oh, the acting is uh, so amazing in it, or, oh, the writing. Whereas right. with this movie, it's sort of like the perfect band, like like the Beatles. It's um, everything works in conjunction yeah. with itself. There's not like a standout for it. Um, the music. And, and the music doesn't overwhelm. The yeah. the visuals are so overwhelming. It needed that music that was so overwhelming to carry it, you know. And and the acting is spot on, so that it, in even his um, picking of the actors was perfect. Like um, with the Duncan, um, with the, with the Momoa, yeah, he, he he could he could not do the Oscar. Uh, Isaac's role. I mean, no. he was perfect for that perfect, you know, and he brings in that energy that's not in the rest of the movie. Like, um, you know, Paul gives him that big bear hug every time, you know? Yeah. Um, so that it brings that, that light into the story that you need at, at certain points so that uh, spoiler alerts <laughs> towards the end of the movie, when he has that epic battle at the end, uh, well, in like his his escape from the city, it's like mm-hmm. okay, he's he's the big superhero. So that when he dies in the that battle and Paul's left by his own, he realizes that he has to go on to be the the hero at that point or or die, right? Essentially, yeah, yeah. That's um that, that's uh that, that kind of goes back to um uh, I always thought uh, it, it's it's very hard to make these kind of movies. Where you have uh, a book and it's and it's a cult following, um, it's hard to translate that. I only know from like from uh, like all like many folks. Uh, I got my love from from science fiction from my dad, and he mm-hmm. he introduced a lot of like you know uh, like Planet of the Apes, um, uh, Soyan Green, mm-hmm. you know, uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yep, exactly, yeah, I, I love that, mm-hmm. uh, and you know Star Trek, Star Wars, all that stuff. Uh, and he uh, he taught we when I was like, what's Doom, Dad? And he's like, oh, the book is fine. But the uh, the movie's horrible. Well, why? It's just boring, and it goes on and on and on and on. You know. And the, the first time they tried it, the first uh, swing was um, I normally poo poo Hollywood and like uh, always always trying to reinvent the wheel or whatever. Every you know every generation yeah. or so, like they always like mm-hmm. new Batman. There's gonna mm-hmm. be another. By the time we're, we're dead and gone, there's gonna be another ten Batman movies. Who knows? To mm-hmm. always keep it mm-hmm. fresh or whatever. But Dune is so unique. Uh, I've never seen any science fiction like that. I've just never seen it, and it seems to me, um, and and that's why um, it, uh, one mm-hmm. of the things I wanted to kind of tie into was I noticed uh, when uh, we we kind of went back and forth on Facebook over this, like, and we said, hey, you want to have a chat and mm-hmm. make it a, a thing? We've always yeah. talked about doing a podcast thing individually in our own lives, but mm-hmm. we figured we'd take a whack at it. So this is that. <laughs> uh, but uh, I noticed right. on your top mm-hmm. ten, it's a super group. Are you, yeah, Basically. yeah, yeah, yeah. Your your, your top ten <laughs> list of science sci-fi movies, you put it up pretty high, and um, uh, didn't you? Or, or or I guess where it rates and like, um, did you also enjoy other um uh Dene movies like uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine oh, yeah. and um and which I was clueless, I didn't pay attention to him. Um, uh-huh. it, but but do you understand? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Like you have, uh, or did you enjoy yeah. other other movies that he's made in the past, like that are science fictiony, you know? And that well, um, yeah. To uh, start with, yeah, I, I followed Denny for a while, um, obviously since I was a nerd about his name. But uh, <laughs> but no, uh, my first film that I saw of him uh, was called Spider with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Okay. And that movie is a total trip. Um, he okay. see. The character sees uh, himself in a film, and it just gets crazier from there. Okay, uh, he, so, he sees himself in a, in a film that he just recognizes himself as a character in a film, okay. and he gets obsessed with who is this person uh, that looks just like me. And uh, it goes in places where you wouldn't imagine or even could come up with. And there's a very reason, good reason why it's called Spider. <laughs> right, right. Okay, there's a giant. Cool. There's a giant spider in it. <laughs> that's awesome. But yeah, oh, yeah. from there, um, I've seen a few others. I've uh, seen Sicaro. Um, I've seen did he, he, Blade he Runner. Did, uh-huh. He did Sicar- uh-huh. Sicario. 
yeah. No. Sicario, yes. Yeah. No kidding. See, he, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, he, he does football. everything. Yeah. That's, oh, man, I love that movie. That That's like a classic, mm -hmm. um, you know how Die Hard is kind of got a, got a cult following like years later or whatever? Mm -hmm. Sicario is like mm -hmm. one of those movies, I think, that are, you know, like, yeah. it's going to get oh, replayed, yeah. whatever, uh, mm -hmm. into Infinity. Yeah, Woodward. and then after he did that, did that he did Arrival, and uh, I think right. during Arrival, yep. it was announced that he was being uh, tied to do the Blade Runner sequel and Dune. Okay. And uh, from Arrival, I kind of knew, okay, this guy can do this. <laughs> you never know; it could he could turn out to be uh, horrible at it. But uh, but yeah, after after Blade Runner, I was like, okay, Dune's going to be great. And, yeah, I, and even still, I, I wasn't ready for how good it Dune actually was. <laughs> I, I was, and I really, I went in, and I got uh, excited. Uh, I don't remember when I heard that it was coming out, but it was pretty recent. I think it was probably maybe early summer that I was aware of it, mm -hmm. that it was going to be out or something, maybe yeah. maybe sooner. But I was like, okay, we'll see. It. I mean, the trailer was good or whatever, whenever they de debuted the trailer. Um, and I, I was hopeful. <laughs> like I am with all science fiction things, but um, that's kind of the, the, <laughs> absolutely. I don't know if you've had this before, but you ever have like if you you just fall like you just love science fiction so much that even the bad stuff is good, you know, like or you're 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 it's bad, <laughs> it's the only thing out right now, and it's whatever, and it's just like well this kind of sucks, mm -hmm. but you know it's better than nothing. That kind of uh, that it goes in streaks, but I was I came in with no expectations, mm -hmm. and I was yeah. really I was really surprised because. Again, it, it has nothing to do with like, and I'm not picking on Star Wars or whatever, but it has nothing to do with like a laser sword, mm -hmm. you know, or or whatever. Right. The, the only thing that I'd be kind of being funny about it, uh, and I'm not giving any spoiler. Well, I this is spoiler alert too, but um, the only Disney mm -hmm. thing that it had was like where like one of the parents dies, <laughs> like in all the Disney and in, in most of the Disney uh, things, like there's a parent that dies or whatever. You know, it's like Bambi, mm -hmm. and, you know, right. Those, uh -huh. you know, it's just yeah. like that's the only thing, but it's not. That's about it. But aside from that, uh, just the world, build, the world mm -hmm. building, um, the fact that like mm -hmm. where they ended it, may I think it made sense. Uh, and you just want mm -hmm. like, part two, part two. Like the first thing my kid yeah. when I saw it was like, are there, uh, is there going to be a part two? Or where's part two at? You know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. One of um, I forget who it was. I think it was Steve Fisher, uh, our friend Steve Fisher. He. Uh, oh, yeah. His he re, his reply to me in Facebook was that um, there was it's basically just all build up, and he loved it <laughs> for yeah. that you know the whole movie and um, another person um, I think a writer posted on Facebook that uh, this movie was like the Star Wars trilogy if Star Wars started with Empire Strikes Back, and yeah. I thought that was kind of a cool way of looking at it because it because it kind of is it it doesn't end. Uh, it you know it's it's just you know part one of a, a two part movie so right um so yeah that's that's um kind of kind of original about it too there's so much original about this movie it's uh, something um it's one of those movies I, I and that's kind of why I haven't seen a, a second time yet I'm still ruminating about about the original viewing of it. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. That's good though. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just, um, the, just from the very beginning when, with that music and uh, as seeing the, the world and I love, um, I said, I, I saw it on HBO max, which I need to go to a theater and see it for those mm -hmm. huge vistas, you know, the, the, he he's not afraid to pull back and i and he does do close ups uh during the movie but um the the thing that i i still remember from the movie is all those huge vistas um that landscape shots and uh that just this takes you instead of pulling you back from it it actually drew you in because you were kind of leaning forward looking at the individual details of that that world and there's so much to see. Like, um, I, I like I like Star Trek. I, I'm a, a Star Trek fan, but yeah, sure. That world is so so plain and and clean, and yeah. the, the really you have to focus on the story and the characters, and that 
that show uh, because there's not much more to it. As the, the, the everybody's uniformly dressed, which is on purpose. So that that right. kind of adds to the the universal story of it. But but with uh, Dune, you're seeing all these unique details that you know that they've kind of painstakingly someone painstakingly thought about each each of those details. <laughs> no, I couldn't agree more. Like I I like going back and like okay, so I've seen it, I've seen it both in the theater twice. And then I start. I watch about a quarter of it, um, probably about midway between um, last week and this week. Um, I, I started to watch it. I, I got tired and I, I went to bed. But um, some of the themes that I, I saw that kind of struck me as uh, that stuck out to me was um, in these movies. It seems like there's one side or another that gets emphasized more. Like when the character, the you know the the antagonist or the protagonist, mm-hmm. sorry, I'm like horrible at this, so I probably screwed that up, <laughs> no, whatever. Cool. The hero. No, you got uh, it. When uh-huh. they, yeah. yeah, when they build up the hero. But like this, it was unique to me from the standpoint, um, like, yeah, well, you never ever see mom and dad, if that makes sense. Like this one, you had- Yeah, that's true. You, yeah. you started out, like where your starting line was, you had powerful dad, powerful mom, and then there's a special kind of thing there, like how they build the world, and then the um, the what is it, the Benny Jesuit, Jesuit, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but that whole thing, it was, I just I've never seen that before, and in, in movies and, and themes and tropes and all that kind of all washed together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't seen. Yeah, that. the I really, I was impressed by. Yeah, it. Mm-hmm. like the uh, like you were to expand upon that. Like yeah, the. The mom and dad on a normal movie would be the unit, um, and um, but really they were kind of polar opposites, and they were each right. trying to impart a lesson onto Paul, and right. he was in that struggle. And the fact that um, the actor that played Paul, most of what you knew from him was from his facial expressions yeah. and. It just kind of you you really realize what a great actor he was because oh, man. everything was ri- written on his face and not not overly comical. You no. you you were right there with him. It's it, it, um, everybody who like did. I don't think I saw anybody overact or underact mm-mm. in any of it. It was like uh, uh-huh. and I I put another prince post uh, was uh, like perfectly measured uh, almost like they they mm-hmm. they he knew. Um, from every cut of the film to or every scene I mean to going from one thing to another it all made sense like there was no like sudden jump of like oh my god we're mm-hmm. here now you know like what how the hell yeah. did we get here or and uh, one of the things that I didn't grab onto right away until somebody told me um, and I'm not ashamed to admit it right. but when he was having those uh, dream sequences or whatever those um, mm-hmm. uh, pre- pre- prescient uh, he could see the future what it uh-huh. I didn't. I didn't really understand what I was seeing. It. I. I mean, I just saw what they were, but what they were was his, he was uh, seeing a future that could happen, uh, like for, in that right, moment yeah. or that whatever. Like it could go because mm-hmm. you saw like a million scenes of him dying or whatever, like right, or, right. Like and it's just like uh-huh. I don't. Does that mean he's gonna die? Like I was. I didn't know that until somebody was like, no, no, no. No, that means that he is. Um, he's his powers are awakening or whatever, or he's uh. His eye is open for whatever that world uh, that you know, not the force, uh, but the whatever they call that. Uh, I'm not quite sure that there's a name for it, but you know what I mean. The uh, the plot device right. for for them to yeah. uh, be able to see in the future, but he can see that because he is the in uh-huh. result of generation after generation of special um, world in the world world building. They um, they didn't just end up like that, but they uh, they got rid of. And this is like going far in the weeds of. Have you read the book, or, or, or are you? I haven't read the book. I, I haven't from either. from an early child, a teenager. I, I've been planning on reading it, and I still gotcha. haven't read it. But uh, it, it just Neither seems like, um, yeah. It. I, I do want to read it now, especially after the movie. But exactly, um, now I have an interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I want to dig deeper into the world. So, uh, so yeah. Um, but no, I, I had a I had a cousin when I was a teenager say, "You need to read this," and um, and I, I've always felt guilty since then. <laughs> like, I, I do need to read it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, based off of um, 
Yeah, in uh, there was the uh, David Lynch's Dune that came out yeah. in the eighties, and then uh, did you know before that um, Jodorowsky tried to make it in the sixties? I think either sixties or seventies. I, I did not know. And that. Uh, was that when, um, was there's that, actually was, a mm-hmm. was Ridley Scott ever attached to anything related to Dune at all that uh, that you know of? I I don't I don't know, uh, right, but yeah, Jodorowsky mind. did a. Uh, did a pre-development and there's actually a documentary on his version of Dune, which I've been meaning to watch. I haven't seen it yet, but evidently it, it, it's pretty trippy. Jodorowsky is a, a trippy director. I've only seen a, a couple of his movies, but actually three, but, uh, but yeah, he's, he, he's something else sort of like, and he, he's, he's a visionary. Like David Lynch is a visionary. Like uh, Denny De- Villeneuve is a visionary. I think it takes a visionary, to do it in David Lynch, I think he was hamstrung by his um, uh, the film company that he was working for, the producers. Uh, he didn't have final cut, so we never got to see his full version of it. Yeah, and uh, they did uh, like a they did do a, a extended version for television that was four hours long, but he didn't cut that, so he made them put his change his name to Alan Smithy on that version of it because he didn't approve of that one i remember i i heard uh i followed uh well obviously all things dune i got i'm, I'm catching up on all the little <laughs> bits and pieces in, on youtube and I, mm-hmm. I heard that i heard that uh he didn't want anything to do with it he didn't want his name attached to it because for him mm-hmm. that's probably I think the only failure like the, just the abject failure that he, if, he, if he could go back he could exit out you know like uh, yeah. just get rid of it but exactly yeah. Yeah, and, and from that, he, he got, uh, from Dune, he, he just said he would never do another film without Final Cut, and um, yeah, from that, he made Blue Velvet, and I, I'm a huge David Lynch fan, so oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I could go on and on about him. Oh, yeah, he's a, yeah, I'm a, uh, I like him, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a big uh, Christopher Nolan fan, uh, mm-hmm. and Ridley yeah. Scott, too, like, um, yeah, yeah, these guys that I love, like they they still can make turds, uh, and I can admit mm-hmm. it. But, uh, I'm still right, gonna right. It and I'm I'm still gonna enjoy it as yeah. a fanboy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, I'm waiting. Uh, I'm not waiting, but I'm kind of waiting for uh, Denny's uh, failure. I haven't seen it yet. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'd agree with that. I uh, um, I do. Uh, I remember distinctly. Remember the 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 science fiction movies. I wouldn't call. I wouldn't put them in my top. Maybe in top fifty or hundred, maybe, but if there such thing existed, uh, which doesn't, uh, because I'm a nobody. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, um, uh, Arrival, I remember. I, I remember because it, it was um, a really good acting, uh, like a serious mm-hmm. acting film that I saw. The uh, SNL actress, um, the comedian, mm-hmm. um, who I can't remember her name. It wasn't Amy Poehler, but it was the other one. Uh, right. I'm yeah. Pretty sure I, she like what she did a really good job. Is it Amy? And, uh, yeah. What is it? Is it Amy Sorry. Adams? No. Maybe. Amy Adams, maybe? No. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe. I, I might. Yeah. I, I'm horrible about folks, and I might be. I might mm-hmm. be completely off the mark by that. Too. I might be thinking of a different. Might be thinking. Of, was it Contact? Contact had Jodie Foster. It was. Yeah. Kind of sort right. of the same, similar. Yeah. Yeah. Ish themes. So we could have. Uh, we could have the. Uh, our audience type in down in the comments and tell us yeah. what <laughs> idiots we are. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I did. But anyway. Uh, um, I re- that was a good mm-hmm. film, and then uh, 2049 uh, Blade Runner was good too. Um, mm-hmm. I, I it didn't didn't seem like it really was a big, huge blockbuster. Like I think this is probably it, and uh-huh. it sucks. I'm really sad that COVID. Uh, I can see, I can understand why um, certain parts of the entertainment industry is against the whole releasing it on like a streaming th- service and the theater too. I understand mm-hmm. that. I think mm-hmm. that maybe they would have made a little bit more money if they were only theater, mm-hmm. theater only. Yeah. But as long as they green lighted for part two, uh, like, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> I think we got that well, um, early, early last week too. Yeah. yeah and, uh, I was looking at the, um, the IMD, the IMDB page, um, uh, you know what, that's just to out. refresh my memory on the, uh, the names of the characters. But if you go to, uh, Denny Villeneuve's um, page, you'll see the part two's listed and a TV series called Dune the Children or something to that effect. Oh, which, well, that's fine. look at that. Yeah. That's fine. yeah. Huh. 
the Sisterhood TV show. Look at that. Sisterhood, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, so I'm sure pulling up on the other screen that yeah. we talked about. No, no, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I pulled up the IMDb page for for his. Uh, that's just crazy. Yeah, but yeah. He, I, I'm really shocked because I didn't. I, I, I had no clue that he did uh, Sicario. I'm not even going to pretend that I knew Sicario. that because <laughs> I had no idea. But that, yeah. dang, he has. He definitely knows what he's doing, and he's a good. Yeah. He, I don't he know also did. You, um, I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna sleep on another. Uh, another one of his movies again. <laughs> no, and uh, I need to go back because I haven't seen Prisoners, um, yeah, which I, I hear is just a kind of a straightforward thriller, uh, drama kind 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 of movie, and then uh, Incendies, which I think is a, a drama as well. Uh, those two I need to, to need to catch up on. I think those are the only two I haven't seen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, um, I, we're, we're coming up on about, I don't know, 20 or so minutes or, or so chit-chatting on Dune, and we can keep keep it going, mm-hmm. um, but I, I was just trying to think about what uh, I wanted to say, and, um, you know, like, my kids are not science fiction nerds like I was growing up. Um, mm-hmm. They're a lot more light lighthearted about it, I guess, or lightweight would be better, mm-hmm. um, and they, they, my son loved it, my daughter liked it, I, I she said she loved it, but... I think that uh, she definitely enjoyed it, um, and we went really late at night too. I don't for some reason I just thought it was like a thing to do, <laughs> but we went, yeah. we went uh, essentially for the midnight show. It was the ten thirty show, and uh, mm-hmm. it was it was fun. It, but plus that was a, that was our first time back as a family to the movie theater in like two years or something. I don't know, right? But, uh, crazy time time difference uh, that uh, we just well we've all been through the Rona stuff, but uh, oh yeah. Yeah, what was like? Uh, I guess what uh, if we were to uh, kind of put a pen in it, and then move on to a couple other uh, nerd-centric uh, comic book things uh, or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. well, I guess what was your top three takeaways that you the, from from it, uh, and got you excited for more? So, like just to uh, set up more, like mm-hmm. more. Cons- I want more Dune, mm-hmm. more Dune universe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. The um, just the fact that it's. Totally unique world. Uh, a lot of the people I was reading comments on was that um, it's it was like a whole new experience for them, and I think those people that love the movie embraced it, and those that are kind of cold or didn't like the movie were kind of left at the door of it. And um, I made a comment, and not snarky. It was basically how how would the younger audience that love the MCU universe, how are they going to take, take it, you know, cause I can't see them, a lot of them embracing it just because, um, you're, you're having to give a lot to the movie. Whereas the MCU movie just is kind of blast out at you and, and it, it's good popcorn fun, but you know, yeah. it's nothing. No, there's no deep, um, things that are, are going to cause you to think about it for a day or two afterwards yeah yeah um, i i don't and there's nothing wrong with star wars or or star trek or marvel absolutely but, uh, not yeah I, I don't know about you but uh and i think a lot of folks uh hit you just kind of got burned out <laughs> for it's kind of like <laughs> you know you can only see so many mm-hmm. marvel films like and, and i love comic right. books and i had a mm-hmm. subscription for my birthdays you know growing up for this comic book or that mm-hmm. comic book or whatever, and, and I enjoyed it as mm-hmm. a kid, but man, mm-hmm. even even I have limits. It's like I'm kind of done, <laughs> uh, not done with the whole thing, mm-hmm. but um, I am excited to see right. some of them. I did hear um, mm-hmm. I did hear some pot, some not so nice feedback coming up about Eternals, but I'll let that stand on its own when it comes out. <laughs> but I, I don't. I mean, I love mm-hmm. I love it, and uh, it would be great to see like where it goes. But I, you know, it's kind of. It's like the Mandalorian. I'm excited for that um, coming out uh, yep. around Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think yeah. that helped out. I think it helped turn the ship around a lot for um, keeping eyeballs mm-hmm. on the screen for Star Wars stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 We could great. probably save uh, a Star Wars um, a new trilogy uh, conversation for uh, another day. But yeah, the, the whole idea that there was basically no plan for the three movies that's just yeah. so bone <laughs> to put a fine point on it such a boneheaded idea that i can't I believe a 
multi-billion dollar company would allow for something like that <laughs> yeah it's just uh you know um, and uh yeah no no doubt but yeah that that's the thing i think that uh is so um awesome about dune is it's so fresh it's it's um yeah and, and you and, see and, that they have a plan right and you and you you understand that like um when you get a little bit you get a couple inches deeper into the dune universe i guess i don't know the whole ins and outs but uh, apparently at some point they use and because this is this universe is thousands and thousands of years old kind of like uh like star star wars it was just kind of like they uh, they abstracted all that stuff away and it was just like a long long time whatever mm -hmm. you know uh right, right but for dune like this the dune universe is very human centric and it's thousands of years mm -hmm. in advance or whatever from where we are today whatever or whatever timeline mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but i guess apparently they had ai or computers and then it went sideways or something like skynet sideways type thing and then they had it like mm -hmm. they they outlawed it and then they got a lot more religious about stuff mm -hmm. uh, and like that's why there's that religious undertones throughout the the whole you know the whole world the whole universe um, yeah and that's why they i think they put up more more of a tilt on like um i think they're called mintats or whatever but the dudes that like where they roll their eyes and they're all white when they roll them and then they mm -hmm. have like uh -huh. they, do the, they do their little spock thing you know <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the human computers or whatever, but it's just interesting. Like, right, right. It, it's it's not yeah. about the, the technology has nothing to do with any of this stuff. It's just the story, and that's what is so compelling about it. Right, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. so original. Yeah. It's, it's nice. You <laughs> said that um, you're you kind of come from a a huge science fiction background, and uh, <laughs> just talk about nerds. Nerds come in all shapes and varieties and, oh yeah and i love the sci-fi sci-fi aspect of it uh but i was the books i would go towards um it was mostly science fiction to start with because you know star wars was, was my world uh but um yeah. but when i found like fantasy and um comic books that was where i kind of blossomed and then when i got older in my teenage years uh, I dove headfirst into horror, and uh, I became like this horror nut for. Uh, so, so I, I run the spectrum <laughs> sure, sure, <laughs> of yeah, everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I know yeah. a little bit about everything, but not a master of any of them. So. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I guess uh, to to kind of put a cap on Dune, our conversation about Dune, and I'm sure we'll, we mm -hmm. will have many more, uh, as as it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah. well, what would your recommendation? Would would you see a thumbs up, thumbs down? See it, don't see it. <laughs> uh, definitely see it. Uh, thumbs okay. up. Uh, ten out of ten. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say ten out of ten. But I really think I do think so. There's uh, the only the only criticism <laughs> I could come up with is that there the some of the maybe cut back a slight bit on the dream sequences. Or the mm -hmm. premonitions or whatnot. Those right. those kind of on on first viewing, maybe on the second viewing, I'll, I'll fall in love with them. But uh, right. they seemed a little too much uh, for me on the on the first viewing. Uh, yeah, but yeah, absolutely. Like um, just just so that. going in that that it's a slower paced movie that yeah. you have to really invest your attention to, and if that's not the movie that you're attuned to or want what to view then you probably aren't going to enjoy it but um yeah but yeah and what's what's your thoughts i i again yeah i'd say it's perfect to see um it's uh, the other thing that i noticed too i which i didn't the first time around but i did the second time with my kiddos was and i normally don't care about the rating i mean i do but i don't um obviously uh -huh. if i'm seeing it i usually if it's something questionable i'll see it before then so i know if, if we do it right right but they're, like they're, a good parent yeah <laughs> yeah i mean what my kids are getting older and, and that's really not necessary now but mm -hmm. regardless um and there are some violent scenes in there i mean there was implied ones which mm -hmm. i was fine with i i liked how he went back to the old school way of like you presuming that something happened like when they show uh one point dave batista um, and I can't, I can't, I don't know his character's name. Uh, and I have a computer here, but I'm going to be lazy and not look it up. But <laughs> he, he does like, uh -huh. like a beheading kind of motion or whatever with it. Anyway, the whole point is mm -hmm. like it's a PG 13. And there's really isn't, I mean, there's really not much blood. It's more 
they do like CGI stuff mm-hmm. with the shields and all that or whatever. Well, they're they're a little fighting uh, mm-hmm. choreography that they do, but it was PG thirteen. Yeah. I was amazed by that, and uh, mm-hmm. I really um, they really are trying to make something that appeals to more adults. I think. But that kids can maybe slide into. I don't know. I'm I'm not gonna say that it's uh-huh. made for kids, yeah. or I'm not even gonna mm-hmm. pretend that. Uh, just for my own kids, that mm-hmm. was true. But uh, yeah, I yeah. said go see it. Uh, it's a it's a good. This, uh, yeah, I was talking to this other guy who has kids, and he said his kids uh, didn't didn't really like it. But um, I think, and I was kind of trying to place myself at their age, and I think. I would have been intrigued by it, uh, but uh, probably wouldn't uh, quite like it. It would be one of those hidden gems that I would discover later in life, you know, right. uh, that, that they'll, they'll embrace and love. So I, I think um, if, if they're not hooked uh, now, they, they will be in the future. I'd agree with that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, so I think that what we're both, uh, uh, I think we both rec- uh, recommend it, no, no doubt. Um, mm-hmm. And with that yep. being said, uh, and I think we went about thirty minutes or so. That's fine. That's good. Uh, uh-huh. And then, um, did you have uh, what other things are you in, are you into? Are you reading uh, that has your has your uh, your attention? Um, things I'm watching. Uh, I'm kind of surprised. I, I'm continually surprised at uh, the amount of comic book TV series and and things that are available back when I was reading comics, I, I had no, I, no idea that, you know, I could spend almost all my viewing time on, on television shows, watching uh, comic related stuff. So right now yeah. I, I'm catching up on uh, Titans. Um, okay. The, uh, about the teen Titans with uh, right. Nightwing and, and whatnot. I'm about to finish the second season and going on to the third, I'm really enjoying it. I, I didn't think uh, I would because I don't like much of the CW mm. DC shows. Um, the, the errors, I couldn't get into any of those. Color, yeah, the template template <laughs> yeah. shows like that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I liked I liked Flash for the first couple of seasons, and then the yeah. I watched the third season. And I was like, okay, I'm I'm done. I, I know what this is. <laughs> what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need it anymore. That's uh, funny you but I'm also that, uh, yeah. That, that's funny you say that about Flash because I got about the season three, season four, and then like I just like I fell off a cliff. And I try to mm-hmm. rewatch it. Like I think there's seven or eight seasons now, and mm-hmm. yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I just popped. I found a YouTube video that explained like seasons this or that, and I just I just cheated that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, I'm also watching. Um, Doom Patrol, which is also based off a comic book, and that one's very, very odd. Uh, it's okay. uh, not really a, a superhero group. It's um, basically a bunch of um, people that have been transformed by this uh, doctor into immortal creatures. Like one guy is this um, guy made a metal robot guy with a human brain, okay. and there's this. Uh, <laughs> One lady with uh, split personalities that have uh, has, each of her um, personalities has different superhero abilities. Uh, the cyborgs are like the only superhero guy in it. And uh, there's this one lady that's in, immortal and she can make herself into a blob like creature. <laughs> and then this awesome. other guy that's uh, got this intergalactic being uh inside of him that makes him radioactive and he's got these protective wrappings kind of makes him look like uh, the invisible man uh with a trench coat uh and glasses sunglasses <laughs> on uh but yeah they they get into these odd adventures the comic book was written the original well not the original but the um first reboot of the comic book was done by Grant Morrison. And that's sort of the genesis of the show where they, they get a lot of the stories from. Okay. And uh, Grant Morrison's really kind of esoteric kind of, kind of out there writer. He um, sometimes I'm long for the ride of his stories. And sometimes he goes off on his left field tangent that just uh, <laughs> goes crazy but the the show um show i i, I like it uh 
for the most part. Sometimes it goes into goofy directions that I don't much care for, but, but overall, it's it's a decent show. Yeah, and I just pulled up the uh, pulled pulled it up on the other uh, screen here. No, that's cool. Like I yeah. um I I've always wanted. I've actually gotten a few recommendations from friends that I know, more, more not necessarily science fiction folks or, or friendly folks, but more like just normal folks, mm -hmm. normies. <laughs> no offense to normies out there, but it is what it is. So, you know, yeah, uh, um, exactly. <laughs> uh, but uh, they they had recommended uh, Teen Titans. And um, you're mm -hmm. like, you're not. The, it's not the, also not the first time I've heard to watch, uh, you know, or, or check out uh, Doom Patrol. Is it something you mm -hmm. think is gonna is gonna keep you around, or you think it's uh, maybe hit or miss, more take it or leave it type thing? Um, I'm one of those nerds that actually look at the credits to see who's writing it and okay. directing it. And Titans, I notice, have a lot of uh, actual real comic book writers uh involved on it like jeff johns and uh brian edward peel i saw wrote a few episodes of that and it kind of shows it, it does, it's not like an exact um adaption i don't think you can ever do an exact adaption to anything but um adaptions cool. <laughs> kind of uh, in, in indicates that but um but it it's it gets close enough to the uh the roots of things to uh make it entertaining and and yeah um like i said i'm only two seasons in but the, it seems like they've got plenty of ideas uh to take it uh at least i think shows i think the perfect you know if you have enough stories to tell i think at the seventh or eighth season mark you're you should be done you should be wrapping right. it up and uh for uh, a lot of others maybe four or five i you know if, if you have a kind of a smaller idea I, I i don't see you taking it past five seasons you know yeah and then you get into um you get into like a little bit long in the tooth. Uh, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how about right. uh, are there any uh, comic book uh, series that you're uh, you're following or, or or recommend folks check out? Uh, there's there's uh, several comics. Um, I, I I spend way too much at the comic book shop each week, but uh, but yeah, there's there's several. Um, the one that uh, I. Uh, I, I would recommend um, now that it's finished, you can go back and get the trade paperbacks. Is Immortal Hulk? Immortal Hulk is was oh. one of the biggest runs. Um, I wanted the basic to go back conceit and check of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the, yeah that's because the basic of your post conceit on Facebook, of it. I saw it too, like the artwork. That's uh -huh. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex Ross does all the covers, which he's. Uh, great artist but um but yeah basically the conceit of immortal hulk is that they realize that well i didn't read it but um evidently something happens with hulk and uh the avengers decide to kill him and hawkeye shoots an arrow into bruce banner's head okay and uh so they think think he's dead but at night he came back as the hulk oh. you cannot kill bruce banner that's the and that's the title, oh. Immortal Hulk. Uh, that's funny. So basically, <laughs> Bruce Banner goes around and does whatever, and if he if he dies, it's okay. <laughs> so he, he becomes a bit reckless at the beginning of the series because uh, he knows he'll, he'll come back as right. the Hulk. And so, and the the cool thing about the story is that's that's the beginning of the story. Uh, that's not the the through line through the whole thing. It, it um, uh, adds layers to it like um the whole big thing is his his father he come came from abusive family and his father was an alcoholic uh that beat and actually ends up killing his mother and so um when he becomes the hulk it's actually he's split personality the the original green hulk is the tantrum child that's acting out um, from all of the uh, the uh, abuse that he received when he was a child, um, so that's kind of a kind of interesting. Um, Sorry, I was bringing up the uh, Mortal Hulk yeah. series, uh, like uh, yeah. on Marvel's yeah. website. A Mortal Hulk mm -hmm. number fifty, I think, is what they say. Is that the right one? Is that sound sound right? Yeah, that's that's 
that just came out. Yeah, but the, so it's a fifty issue series. Yeah. All right, cool. Then I'm yeah. on the right. Yeah. But I'm on the right. I'm, yeah. I'm on the right yeah, web page. Yeah, you never yeah. know with these things. There's like yeah. a million different freaking. <laughs> oh yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, and the, that's the bad thing about uh, Marvel um, now is like uh, the they start um, restarting series like. Uh, they just restarted Iron Man recently, and that that screws up. I, uh, that that's good for Marvel in that. Hey, here's the issue number one. Everybody wants the issue number one, so everybody everybody buys issue number one. Uh, but it screws up collectors trying to find a particular issue. It's like no, no, it's not issue number one for 2020. I want it's <laughs> from 19 whatever. But yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was just pulling up the uh, Titans, the uh, oh, uh, show. Hopefully it'll pull up there if I can do my Google right. Oop. No, we've been using ID, IMDb. Uh, DB. I don't really get uh, religious over this stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know about you, but uh, yeah, so you said uh, you, you, you were watching the uh, teen, uh, Titans. Uh, Doom Patrol, uh-huh. and then you recommend uh, Immortal Hulk and comic book mm-hmm. form. Yeah, and um, for for old school stuff, I've been reading uh, Peter David's uh, Incredible Hulk. Yeah, oh, Hulk. that's so classic! Yeah. I love Peter David. He wrote yeah. Imazati. Yeah. Uh, little known fact, uh-huh. uh, which was the love story between Counselor Troy and uh, uh, Riker. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I forgot that he he wrote he wrote on on that, and uh, he's written novels, and yeah, he's 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 come back uh, to write um, some short miniseries on uh, at, at Marvel. He did he does. Um, there's a old version of Hulk called uh, Maestro, uh-huh. and uh, from the future, and he's he's just a uh, really cranky, pissed off. Uh, Hulk <laughs> now, that has now, Bruce Banner's that, mind. Now that was the the one like in that in that world or that future. That's where um, he becomes the king of the world uh, somehow, some way. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. it kind of there were there banjos playing in that one or not? Uh, like it got a little weird uh, on that one, or 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 was that a different one that I uh, I'm, I'm recalling? Um, I I don't know if I actually re- read the the original ones, but um, but yeah, the um, the the newer ones. I, I don't remember banjos, but uh, okay, but yeah, he, the, he, he does become king. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm remembering uh, misremembering something else. Anyway, uh, so the and then um, and that storyline does he um, isn't like there like another one Mep- Mephistopheles or something like that? Another like somebody like possesses the Hulk. And it you and and is that or am I thinking of a different, completely different Hulk storyline? Um, I think it's different. Um, okay, they, or it might be one that I haven't read. That's this thing with comic books; they've been going on for so many years that yeah, and then, yeah, you you might have missed out on a certain storyline. I, I obviously, yeah, I yeah. obviously did. So, uh, but, but next time you come around, I'll I'll find those answers out uh, myself and like because <laughs> okay, I'm misremembering yeah. a lot here. But in any case. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I'd say. Uh, um, have you checked out or seen uh, Foundation at all on Apple TV Plus or whatever the hell Apple calls it? Uh, well, <laughs> here's the thing: with the streaming services, I have to draw the line somewhere. Yeah. And with Apple, I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm I'm kind of interested in it. Um, I'm not a huge Asimov fan. I've I read one of his. Um, robot books uh when i was a kid and mm-hmm. really enjoyed that and then wasn't able to get into anything else by him but uh mm-hmm. but yeah I, i'm i'm definitely intrigued by it um but yeah with all these services it's like i don't know <laughs> uh, trust me i think I, I recently got a new ipad or whatever and i think i got it for free um on the thing but i mm-hmm. it just so happened the timing whatever and then the foundation thing came. i i am watching that on um on apple whatever the hell heck it's called but uh, it's uh-huh. I gotta say it's it's pretty good. Like I don't, I kind of don't know how I feel about it. Ultimately, um, I'm enjoying mm-hmm. it as entertainment. I think it's, I think it's got some appeal. I don't think it's got near the appeal that like a Dune has uh, mm-hmm. to like normal folks. Um, but mm-hmm. it, it's good. It it, it yeah. it's I, I'm not I've never read the Foundation books. I've only read um, maybe two of his uh, robot 
uh, books or, you know, robot law mm-hmm. books, that kind of thing. Um, and mm-hmm. I think that was when I was back reading um, Neil Stevenson and uh, and catching up on uh, the metaverse. And uh, I can't remember mm-hmm. the name of it. Uh, but anyway, it was metaverse. Like a, that's Facebook now, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Meta. Right? <laughs> Meta. Yeah, great. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, but I them and then um, uh, reading. I was gonna say um, so I've never read uh, manga at all. And uh, my brother-in-law mm-hmm. is um, he went over to Japan and he taught English, etc. Um, sorry, something just flashed. I just gotta make sure I'm. Uh, anyway, he he went over and taught English as a language, whatever, blah, blah blah. And um, he got me into it recently, and it's uh, Planet uh, Planetes. Uh huh. I'm not familiar with it, but I, I just uh, started to crack it, and I've had it for about a month, and I need to read more, more of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like my first manga that I'm breaking into, and I don't know, I don't mm-hmm. know up or down for any of that stuff. But uh, so far, mm-hmm. like, like the, I probably read about 50 pages of it, um, and it's like a compendium of like uh, volume f- zero through whatever. I don't know, uh, but uh, mm-hmm. that's actually how I consume a lot of the older storylines. Is I'll go to the comic book shop. And if there's like a Ben Riley Spider-Man epic or something like that, or a um, Red Sun Superman, or I don't know, um, I don't know, like a, a Frank uh, Frank Miller Batman or whatever, you know, like I'll go back and I'll, I'll buy mm-hmm. the compendium kind of thing and flip through it and get right, yeah. it. You, you just can't. I, I, I try to read the comic books on like a digital device and I can for some things, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like I kind of enjoy the physical <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah i i'm the i'm i'm the same way and uh yeah while well, i grew up on the the floppies you know the um someone calls them the uh cat swatters you know you roll them up <laughs> but, uh, right uh yeah uh oh and uh you mentioning ben riley they're bringing um him back uh as spider-man in amazing spider-man um are they really huh yeah yeah they, they, there's like um there's like a, this big corporation that's uh, putting together superheroes, and they hire him as their uh, their main superhero guy to recruit others. So uh, it could be interesting. I, I'm I'm still a diehard Peter Parker fan, but <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll see how it goes. I I, I really um, probably one of my all time favorite Spider-Man storylines, and this is kind of getting off in the weeds, and that's okay. Um, this is what the thing's mm-hmm. about is was the uh, yeah, right. and I didn't come prepared for this, uh, but mm-hmm. it was where Doc Ock um, takes over Spider-Man's body. I'm pre- I don't I can't remember oh, if Ben Riley did that or not, but anyway, I enjoyed that storyline, mm-hmm. like where he he kind of in in some ways he kind of like realizes that holy crap, Peter Parker was holding back every time he fought one of us villains, and mm-hmm. uh, and and that he kind of like. I don't know how it, I need to really go back and really read it again, but I think he was mm-hmm. more of a selfish Peter Parker, so to speak, because he right. he, he was like, oh, you got to make money, and he, he started that, and then he mm-hmm. was a klutz when it came to like any kind of romantic interest, and I can't remember the uh, possessed Peter Parker, like who he was uh, interested in, but it was uh, it worked anyway. It was fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'm trying to think of anything else I've read or seen, but um. Uh, science fiction wise, well, Dune, and then uh, well, we covered that for sure. Uh, what about? Uh, are you excited? Or are you caught up on the Expanse? Oh, um, you know that's are, one of those that I, I need to get back into. I I uh, got through the third season uh, through Sci Fi, and then um, uh, for some reason I, I found something or another to watch. Uh, so I haven't got into the uh the seasons on amazon and then recently i heard they've canceled it so it's like um you know it's like do i do I want to invest my time back into it or did they end it properly will i have to now go back and read the books <laughs> i'm right, sure like yeah. uh in that that that's that kind of limbo <laughs> area yeah that the final season i, th- I only asked because uh, i think i don't know when it's coming out i think it's later this year i think in december maybe mm-hmm but I okay. know that it'll be the final six season of it. So, um, uh-huh. and I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say anything cause I don't want to give away spoilers, but, um, mm-hmm. if you blast through the first few seasons, like sci-fi seasons, and then you pick up on four or five and six, 
Um, mm-hmm. Five has its moments, but for the most part, um, the Amazon takeover of it is pretty solid. Um, it it, it mm-hmm. just makes you fall. I, I love that show too because that it, it's a show that it puts it like a more of like a different kind of more older tech kind of thing, like where it's not mm-hmm. warp engines and this and that. It's like yeah, it's science fiction and they have their own little whatever uh, to go mm-hmm. from here to there, but. That's like a whole, like, that's more like realistic, like where, you know, I don't know that we would, I don't know about the technology for like going faster than whatever, but like, that's probably mm-hmm. how it's going to be. You know, it's probably going to be, it's just an interesting future look at like what, yeah. our, what humanity would look like in our not too distant world. You know, uh, it's just interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those, those first three seasons, I was, I was really into them. Um, yeah. They, they came up with the ideas that, uh, that I hadn't thought of before. It was reminiscent of the, the, um, the reboot of Battlestar Galactica. I I got a lot of vibes from that show in this, this show. (laughs) I've heard that before too. I, I'm not per se like a big Battlestar Galactica fan. I'm, I'm I'm an after the fact kind of fan. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was never really Mm -hmm. like my major jam. I didn't hate it. Um, Mm -hmm. I loved it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I I love the, uh, the, the, everything that came from it. And I love that, uh, world that world building that they did. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, it, it's just interesting to see like what could be or whatever, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. coming down the line. It, it's exactly. like, uh, right. I don't know about flying cars in 2021, but we definitely have, uh, <laughs> some good leanings for science fiction. It's just funny how, how everything works. But I think, uh, mm-hmm. uh, with that, I was trying to think of any, I, I, I didn't write anything down for like other recommendations, but I think I was going through, mm-hmm. I always, I never got to finish the Doomsday series um, with a with a, a DC. I'm not doing justice to it, mm-hmm. but, but it's the uh, uh-huh. little button with the um, uh, smiley face with the blood symbol. Where from? Um, uh, oh, uh, Watchmen. Thank you. Yeah, Watchmen. Watchmen uh-huh. and Superman and all that Doom or whatever. Like all that <clears> was like. I don't think it's Doomsday. It's uh-huh. something else, but. Um, I right. think they got uh, a, a doomsday clock. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. thank you. That's what it is. That's what uh-huh. it is. I, I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm re going through that because I only got bits and pieces of it, and I, I really want to read it physically, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> yeah, digitally yeah. anyway, what I can afford. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that series. A lot of people didn't, but that really? was so. But, but, you but say it was I, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. it's not. The original Watchmen, and nothing's going to be that. But, uh, but yeah, for what it is, I enjoyed it. Cool. All right, we're coming up on about fifty-seven minutes or so. Uh, do okay. you have anything yeah. else that you want to cover? And I think uh, as we get we do these more, we'll get a little bit better about it. But in any case, uh, we got <laughs> right. a minutes left. Uh, is there any like a last? I'll give you last minute. And uh, if there's anything you want to uh, to keep watch out for, or what's up, or like uh-huh. something to think about for next time. Mm-hmm. Something well, like that. Um, since since it's uh we filming we're filming this on Halloween, happy yeah. Halloween! And uh, what's Thank your you. favorite uh, Halloween candy? My favorite, um, anything with peanut butter. <laughs> probably uh, Reese's Reese's peanut butter cups, and I only say it because uh, this is probably the one time a year my son is is really deathly allergic to peanuts, so he oh, can't uh, have them. So he's got to have an EpiPen and right. stuff. So. I have I've had vast tracts of time like where I've had a peanut free house, and like mm-hmm. every once in a while where I get to be like oh got to take those candies, uh, then that's probably my all time favorite one that I miss, or that I try to mm-hmm. I sneak in here or there uh, mm-hmm. so it's not around when he's not when he's around. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> um, do you remember those? Uh, well, the one that I liked, and I'm not a huge chocolate guy, but I love those little yeah. crackles, Hershey's crackle. Okay. Just because you could, that was you could never get that um, any that other time. It was always in those Halloween bags. Although um, I looked recently, and they actually sell them as bars now. But uh, oh, but yeah, not that they tasted anything special. But I always felt like getting something special. You know? <laughs> get yeah, get that, that that crackle. But <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Uh, but, uh, um... Yeah, no, I, uh, the, whenever the, you'd get a candy, a full candy bar, which is very rare when we were growing up, uh, it, it was always mm-hmm. like, wow, wow, this is the good neighborhood. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
for sure. But yeah. no, as as far as uh, maybe future topics, I was thinking um, maybe do an episode. Uh, the big thing right now is Squid Game, you know, and maybe mm. do a discussion of uh, Asian cinema and, and television. I I've sure. dipped my toes quite a bit into that area, so yeah. I don't know how familiar you are with it, but, oh, uh, yeah. but maybe we can get a discussion yeah, going there. Back in the 80s when I was growing up, uh, a little tangent here uh, real quick, there was the um, Mysterious Cities of Gold, um, and that was an anime series that was uh, made, I think, from Japan, uh, but it, w- it got popular over here around, it was on Nick Jr., way back when Nickelodeon, or maybe it was Nickelodeon, it was before Nickelodeon was like big and ma- major or whatever. Anyway, mm-hmm. I saw that uh, that series was um, The Mysterious Cities of Gold, but I know that was... That's something uh, related, and I know um, uh, Voltron. <laughs> Growing up, like kind of the <laughs> the, 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 the yeah, and that that would be great uh, to. Uh, I've only seen a few episodes of Squid uh, Games. I need to finish it. How about you? I've seen the whole thing. Um, okay, cool, cool. People were threatening to uh, spoil it for me, so I had to do. It. I, I hate doing a binge watch, but uh, I had to do right. it. <laughs> right, right. No, so no, this. that sounds good. I I love that. Like, l- let's do that. So. My, I'm Mike Shaw, um, and the, and this has been um, I'm Thomas Doctor Corner something, and I'll I'll, I'll let Tom, yeah. Thomas uh, say goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I'm Thomas. Uh, we'll come up with a fun and wacky way to end it next time, but uh, <laughs> we'll do the awkward ending this time. Right. right. Uh, but yeah, it was great talking to you, man. Same. Same.